knowing how it knowing how it fires. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and put this in here like this. So we're just joining them together. And let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, again, we're we're teeing it off, so it's actually still bringing the spark plug line. So it's a it's a pickup coil, so it's not introducing a lot of voltage or anything like that. So if anything is AC. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and get that ru ru working and running. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let me go ahead and start the engine. And we'll focus on the fire here. Here we go. Okay. Our our key in position, on position, our lights are on, our kill switch is on now. Here we go, we're gonna fire it up. Okay, we'll check it out, see if our RPM works. Nope. Oh, oh, look at that! We fixed it! Ha <laughs> That was it! So that what it means, because our engine's working, we gotta get our spark here from tied to the blue wire. So that pretty much fixed it. So you can see here, it's idling at this much. I was going to actually show you guys how to take it off, but there is probably no more reason to. Wait. Okay, there you go. There you go. I, I can't do any more because I'm on a standstill. But you can see here, it worked. So what it was, was if you're going to sell the Ban Ching one, make sure you also tap it to this pickup wire because you took it off of the ignition coil you're going to need to bring back that also that black and yellow wire which your color code might be different it might be for another then it might be black and white but you need to whatever was tying to your ignition coil you need to also join it to your pickup coil as well as the stator pickup wire so you need to join them both here so you can see how it's idling down now which is good we want the engine not to strain itself so there it goes it might die i don't know so we'll still need to further tune it. But I'm just very happy that was a very simple fix. Now, I will show you how to open the gauge cluster and clean this out still. That way you can see, okay? So let me go ahead and do that. And you can see the mechanism. Here you go. I was just right now, it's idling right now, right? So I'm gonna give it a little more juice. See that? Working beautifully like a charm. Again, if you have the Benjing one, since it has the built-in ignition coil, you're gonna need to tap the ignition coil wire as well to your pickup stator wire so it can actually give a reading. Now, it's not gonna be the most accurate like a TAC meter or anything like that or a digital meter, but you know what? At least you'll have something to go reference by, but you can always install a digital meter. Just like we did install a digital uh, volt meter because our analog one, you know, it doesn't tell us accurately. It just kind of gives us a little ratio where it's at. But yeah, I installed another one uh, for the volt meter. I'll show you that a little bit. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and take this off. Let's go ahead and take this off and I can show you how to take off the panel. But again, the recap of what we just did there, we pretty much brought the pickup wire pulse also to the ignition coil wire, which used to be external. So it's introducing, I guess, the pickup wire as well as AC voltage here. Um, I'm curious to know if it's actually gonna test out for DC voltage as well when engine starting. So let's go ahead and check out. Um, it probably will because we are connected to the pulse wire. But let's go ahead and check out for DC voltage as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off. When you take this off, it's not gonna, you know, RPM gauge is not gonna work anymore because it needs that pulse. See that? Let's see if I can raise it. Okay, the needle's not going anywhere. But the minute I can tap this in here, hopefully it's not grounding it. Okay, tap it in there, right? You can tap it in there. I have to pick up coil, and then I'm gonna tap into this one right here so I can get a reading. Okay, now I'm gonna rave it. Look at that sucker fly. Okay, so that's it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to take off the front panel. I'm gonna kill the switch here. Turn off ignition anyway, and turn off my gas. Gas is great, no problem whatsoever. No more leaks since we saw that little small tie strap versus this big Roka, so I'm very pleased with that. And let me just turn off the gas just for, actually, you know what, leave it on because we're not worried about it. It's not gonna spill or anything like that when it goes to the float bowl. So what you do is if you have the same kind of scooter model or similar to the Zenon, uh, take off the bolts here. We're gonna remove this, it's very simple. I'm gonna take my Phillips. Let me get a Phillips here. Use the long one. If you could do this with both hands it would be better because you wanna support the plastic at the back end. What it is, it has a little metal bracket here you want to make sure it hits it see that right there 
those right there, the screw needs to drive in there like that. So you might want to put your hand over like that. And put a little silicone too next time if you're permanently going to fix it on there. So you're not planning to remove it so often. But I'm going to open the gauge for you show what's show you what's in the gauge. Okay, there we go. One. Two. Just loosening it here. I wish this was a real um, tinted reflector. You can actually use it, but it's just a solid painted black one. <laughs> it's plastic, but it looks cool though. But not really usable, but it just looks aesthetically pleasing. Just like a little bug shield, I guess. But from the front, this, this scooter here looks like a motorcycle. So it always throws people off. They think I'm a cop or something. They usually slow down for me or make way. So it kind of serves that as purpose right there. Can't complain. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this out. Okay. I'm going to record as much as I can. I think my phone might give up shortly. So I'll try to make this in one video shot. Okay, so this is off now. Be careful, don't put it anywhere because you can easily step on it and crush it. So we'll put this here safely with all these bolts. Okay, now all you gotta do is, uh, you know there, your domino reading right here? It actually gets picked up from a little cable that spun like a square sort of, and it goes all the way wrapped around to your front wheel right there. So the more it spins, it knows how many you travel. So that's how it reads it. But now we know how our RPM gets a signal pulse. It's somewhere for the ignition coil that if you do cut the external one, you have to tap it back to your blue pickup coil one. So that was a good way to know. Now there's actually, everything should come off. So you can see here, it's pretty simple. You just take this off. Well, you don't actually have to take this off right now. This is actually a jointed piece, but I'm gonna show you how to take it off because we're gonna take off the whole assembly, right? So, but the main thing is you wanna take off the other two wires and you wanna screw that domino reading off, which if you wanna lift it up, be a little bit easier for you to get a little more hand slack in there. Now, see there, just gotta get your hand in there somehow. So you can probably come around from the other way, leaving a little more. We'll take out the harness from the other side Remember the two here that I missed and I forgot to plug it back in because I did took it off earlier. So let me go ahead. Oh, sorry. That's the ignition right here. You don't need to worry. You don't need to buy yourself with the ignition here. I was grabbing the ignition one. The ignition one just has four prongs. If you ever want to see what the ignition one looks like. 